Well, hello everybody and welcome to our last meeting where we have really only one agenda item, um, but I guess the agenda has, starts with, does anybody have anything they wanna change or add to the agenda hey, before we start? Hey, hey Porter, can you hey, yeah. just hear, you need to, since I made you host, I need you to record it. So if you want to say record, oh. that'd be good. Uh, Recording in progress. Thank you. Great. So here we are at our last ARPA meeting. And the only item on our agenda is to talk about the tier two, uh, but our agenda actually starts if anybody has anything they wanna to add to the agenda. Yeah, not. All right, let's dive in. Um, I will say that the select board um, very nicely uh, accepted our report. I don't know, Ian or Valerie, if there was any conversation about that um, after we left, but um, can you share with us if there, if you know, is there any plan? Like what's next? What's the next step? Um, there was no definitive action taken. I suggested that we break up the uh, list into manageable chunks. Those that are connected with nonprofits in the area or you know, in town or surrounding area, we look at those, ask for proposals from them, and then vet those proposals and hopefully uh, deliver the funds. And then we would look at the other uh, pieces or other other um, uh, suggestions on the list that were do that are uh, more town focused, and then uh, begin a plan to uh, instigate those at at different levels. I know that. I mentioned that some of them are already in progress, which is nice, like the charging stations and the bus shelters. Others we would need to delve into and get more uh, information about that. And I'm gonna be working on that. Uh, and then I think the other thing that uh, I know Val is looking at and that we'll be working on is the uh, <laughs> grant writing position, just trying to get that out the gate as fast as we can to be able to hopefully uh, initiate someone with that who can then obviously help with uh, funding for perhaps uh, other items on that list. Great, thank you. I did notice when the town report came out that technically all of our um, terms on the ARPA committee last until I think next year. So I presume <laughs> that uh, <clears throat> the select board, if they feel like they need help moving any of those pieces ahead, um, would feel like they could reach out to us as a group. Um, so. Yeah, don't do don't don't uh, don't go out of town for the next year. Yeah. Leaving town tomorrow, and I'll be gone for three weeks out of the country. Very excited about <laughs> it. It's about the last Yay. thing I do before I go. So yeah, don't email me after tonight. Okay, <clears throat> so um, let's see. Um, I'm going to share my screen. My screen says that it's a draft, but I think it's actually the final report. So, um, <clears throat> all right, thumbs up if you can see. The report to the site board. Okay, so uh, tier two was included in the report because we, you know, we wanted them to have everything. But this was the list of things that we thought, you know, they were ideas of merit, but that um, we didn't put on our top list. And so, kind of like Ian had suggested that the select board might do. I wondered if we want to talk about whether we want to approach anybody about any of these things. And if the answer is no, then that'll be fine. Um, and if the answer is yes, then maybe you know we can decide how we wanna do that. So I'm thinking maybe just start at the top and see what people think. What does that sound like? Sounds good. All right. Um, so I don't know, who might we suggest or talk to about repairing Memorial Park? Order. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I will say the, uh, um, you know, Porter sort of a little bit with a hat on that says Bristol Trail Network um, has been, uh, we got a grant from the State Department of Health of all things with money from the CDC, even weirder, to um, promote health equity. And the grant is in technical assistance. So they're not giving us money, but what they're giving is, um, uh, engineering time. So um, there, and this is for a project that I have again, sort of with my Bristol Trail Network hat on, but it's really about town properties. I want to create uh, fully ADA accessible paths on at least three of them. So Memorial, Eagle, and Sycamore. And that's a huge undertaking. And it starts with some conceptual 
um, designs that will allow us to talk about what that might look like and then to uh, build community engagement and then to um, get more grant money to do engineering and um, from that to get a construction <laughs> estimate and then to do a whole lot of really big grant writing to actually make that happen. So none of that actually repairs the bridge and gets that trail back open, um, but eventually it might be related to that. Other than that, I got nothing on repairing that bridge. The Bristol Channel Network is a teeny tiny organization with a teeny tiny pot of money. And that's a big project that's going to need a lot of money. So I guess I would just say when uh, when there's a grant person on board, that would be a super thing to look into. Um, but the Bristol Trail Network, the Bristol Rec Club, and Porter Knight have nothing there. Yeah. Except what I just said. I don't know, should we say grant writer and keep our fingers crossed? Yeah, I mean, I, I think those are, the item's already sort of on the select board's bar radar, isn't it, Ian? Yeah. Yeah, we've been we've been working on that with with Porter and the trail network and exploring different ideas. I know that and we the, yeah, the conservation procured, procured a bridge, um, but I don't think that's going to be useful in that location just because of its size and the difficulty. But yeah, it is on the town's radar. OK, cool. Uh, similarly, for the trail network upgrades, um, including parking, we're not doing anything this year. We're still sort of recovering from all the changes that have been happening. So uh, we'll try to get the river bend open. Um, I do on that ADA accessible fantasy, one of them is to improve the parking at the bottom of South Street and have um, an accessible path to a viewing platform nearer to the river, not in the foundations of the historic um, coffin factory though. But other than that, I don't even know exactly where people are hoping for parking. Hmm. Yeah, because the the firehouse side, there's piles of street side parking available in the in the development. So that and yeah. from there you can also pop to the to the <laughs> dump trail and that kind of stuff. So yeah. I think so the, yeah. A big... yeah, the map, um, yeah, if we could have better, safer parking at South Street, that would be great. And then there's the two ends of the trail, Basin <coughs> Street and um, Pine Street. And, you know, I'm keeping my eyes on, you know, if the town is able to put a better, you know, a new town road shed um, there, we would look for some public parking for trail. Um, and, you know, depending on what ends up happening with Bay Street, um, if there's an opportunity for some parking there for trail, that would be great. Um, so, you know, again, trail network, my eyes are looking at that and thinking about that, but I'm not really moving on it at all. Have you have well, you had specific comments about parking in certain areas? No, okay. I mean, there's there are the little P for parking is on the map and the whole trail is so accessible from the village that there's plenty of places to park and walk to it. You can be on the trail in less than five minutes um, from, you know, the rec club, from the high school parking lot, from the fire, you know, house drive from downtown, so. Yeah, I guess the only area I see would be South Street, just because that's not really a paved area. Um, if we ever wanted to explore that uh, and make it more more um, organized and a little bit more infrastructure down there in terms of the parking. Also, yeah. the site, distance, site distances are not that great. Yeah. Um, well, so we'll just skip the bike walk trails for now and say the South Street River access. A um, couple people had mentioned that, making that more of a recreation or a swimming destination. That's out of my zone. Anybody else have thoughts? Diane? Um, <clears throat> am I unmuted? Yes. You are. Okay. Um, across, you know where the trail comes in onto South Street on the east side of the bridge? Now, across the river... There's a long driveway that goes to a house. Who owns that? You know what I'm uh, talking about? I do. Yeah, that is Pump House Drive, and that go that leads to the water supply pump house. Oh. But it's a is it so, a private drive and we have access? Is that correct? I believe it's I believe it's a town road. Oh. I could be wrong, but I believe it's a town road. I haven't looked at that, but maybe there's some space on one side of that road that could be parking. Well, yeah, I mean. 
the Buskas own the parcel that you that you drive through. So I don't know if it's a town road or if it's just a right away. I'm not sure either I way. I see. It's mapped as a private road. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank <laughs> you, Rob. <Bye>. Yep. <laughs> Bob's on it. Well, it might be worth, worth looking at just to find out if the disc is saying no way. Well, then that's it. Exactly. Would you? Are you suggesting then in developing a swimming hole on that side of the river or that people park there and cross the bridge? Park and cross the bridge. I or, wouldn't advocate that. I haven't looked at the river. I haven't really looked okay. at the river, especially in the spring. Um, to see is there access from the other side, from the south side of the river? Could we make access there? Yeah, because the uh, the bridge does not have a safe uh, pedestrian or bike right. space. It's it, that was a swing and a miss when that bridge got rebuilt. Um, that it did not um, include a safe width. Yeah, um, it's a disaster. But uh, that's again on my fantasy. There's all kinds of you know. Who knows? But um, but I think I don't think that we would want to encourage people walking across the bridge at this point um, without some safer space. Sure. Well, a couple of people approached me about making that a better swimming hole because they go, mm -hmm. they would like it to be better. So I'm going to ask them if they've looked at the other side in terms of access from the south side of the river. Could that be um uh, established so no one would have to cross the bridge. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, we have, if park, if Basin Street were improved and parking were safe down there, um, that might be a nice place. There's, you know, the trail network has good access to the river there um, and it's safe and there's grass and, you know, that area could be, you know, call it septic park. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's also that there's more space there. The town owns the land. It owns the road and it owns obviously the parcel that the um, septic system is on. So you, we have a lot more options to sort of potentially uh, do something there. And it has, I think it has better access to the river than, than perhaps the South Street Road does. Oh, much, much easier to get to. Yeah. Whether there, whether it's a good swim spot is another question. It mightn't be too shallow. There might not be yes. as many pools for folks to, to get into. People can walk. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and that's true. Like with the trail network little piece there, um, it's like a three minute walk. Um, yeah. You know, so that would be a safer place for children and families um, if it is shallow. And then you could walk up the river to the deeper part closer to the bridge, or you could walk the trail and get in the more rugged way um, that exists already. Yeah, well, it's just, uh, I just threw it out as something to think about. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Um, so where should we go with this idea? Should we just let it, it's, it's landed, Valerie's heard it, Ian's heard it, I heard it, um, and just, you know, so if Trail Network and Town want to go ahead with that, or do we want to push that more? No, I, I I think that that's a good approach is, I mean, the trail network has it in your radar. You've heard some good ideas. I think going forward with it and then enlisting the town for possible financial support and or um, trying to help form a group to figure this out. I don't know, but I, I, I don't think trying to assign it to a specific group today makes sense. Order, did you ever uh, reach out to um, the landowners to the, uh, what is that? I did. I <laughs> called her again just last week um, okay. because I received another email from regional planning that there was flood um, mon you know, money available to buy properties in the floodplain that might uh, jeopardize water quality. Um, so what Ian's talking about is there's a 6.9 acre parcel at the bottom of Basin Street. Um, and it's unbuildable, um, and the landowner is periodically in town, um, and she and I have had some cordial conversations over the years. Um, she hasn't felt like she was ready to part with that parcel, um, but uh, there's money available, and she's aware of that. One option is um, purchase with a life estate. Yeah. 
if she calls me back, I'll mention that. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, that's a, even though it's not buildable, <laughs> obviously, because it's location in proximity to the water, it's, it's a nice piece of land. It curves all the way around, almost to the top of Basin Street, um, and could be, a lot could be done in that area if, with what we're talking about. Yes. Um, and then that was uh, something that I hatched uh, about six years ago. So I've been talking to her, we'll see. Um, but that's a great idea, Valerie, about the life estate. I'll, I'll be sure to mention that if when I next talk to her. Um, okay, so then just the general bike walk trails. Um, again, from the trail network standpoint, I don't have any plans to expand at all right now. Um, I have had a landowner recently approach me um, and so, you know, I'll talk with that person some more, but that's not, you know, it's really just a very, very basic place. So, um, like I said, we're going to just maintain, but, and, and again, I don't, the Bristol trail network really doesn't develop bike trails. I mean, you can bike on some of those trails, but they're not really bike trails. Um, I right. don't know. Do you guys have other thoughts on that? There was exploration about the, uh, Green Mountain Campground, right? Did that anything come of that? Um, do you mean like in the very, very beginning, like 2017? It was a while ago, and, they, and I know that the owner of that campground was sort of interested in having trails up the mountain. It was more of like a mountain bike trails versus just walk trails and bike trails, but I don't know if anything yeah. ever became of that. Um, well, he did, we helped him create a little map for some trails that he has on his parcel. Um, they're again, not like a destination mountain bike, but if you were camping there, it might be fun for you or your kids to hike or bike those. Um, and he did say that those trails are open to anyone in the community for free. Like mm -hmm. if you wanted to go use the swimming pool, he has a day fee and stuff like that. Um, which actually, now that I think about it, when people were talking about outdoor swimming in the summertime, that's again, that's something that we could promote. Like he's happy to have local people come and pay a small day use fee um, to use his pool. Um, but, um, for the trails, he said any Bristol resident who wants to use those trails can, um, it's just, it's a very tiny little trail segment. Uh, but I will make a note to mention that to, um, mountain bike Bristol group and to, um, Meredith who it coaches the, um, the high school mountain bike club. And, um, that might be a place where if, there were potential for more mountain biking that they could work with him. Sounds good. I'm writing. Sounds good. Okay. Other recreation. Um, outdoor dining. What are your thoughts on that, folks? Um, Bristol Core has uh picnic tables that are currently not assembled we got them a couple of years ago with a real estate association grant and they just haven't been assembled there are four of them uh all in one metal units and we hope to assemble them this year and have them on the park okay will they be there year round or is it just a seasonal thing um I'm not sure. We don't really have a place to store them once they're assembled and they're quite large and heavy. So my thinking was that they would be there year round. Many town parks do have that. Um, obviously, they'd receive more wear and tear than if we took them out and just had them seasonally. But there are people use the park year round regardless. Sure. And there are there are already uh, some small picnic tables that are there or a couple. Um, so I think we just try year round and see see how it goes. Do do these have seating or do you have to bring your own chairs? It's it's integrated seating. You have um it's all sort of metal uh mm -hmm. grid kind of thing. So you have a large table area and then connected to that is seating either side of that. So it's all built in as one. You can't really move them around. The ones that we have there now you can sort of pick up and move. These would be a little bit heavier, but yeah, I think you could probably fit 3 or 4 people on each side. Porter, is there any more definition of what is meant by outdoor dining, or is it is it literally limited to the park? It's not limited to the park. I don't remember exactly where it came from. This tier two, like um, all of the list, like outdoor dining might have been something that four different people mentioned, and one person might have meant 
I really loved sitting outside during COVID when I went to the restaurants downtown and somebody else might have meant we should have picnic tables on the park and somebody else might have meant something different. So mm-hmm. Got it. I know that I know that some businesses have tried, have explored enlarging their outdoor dining. I've spoken with the owners of the Bobcat just to, to see what the options were. We're limited because of our diagonal parking. It's very hard to do something, even if you took a couple of spaces and, and they had permission to do that because of the angles and the way that cars pull in and out and sight lines. It's it's they're hard to sort of turn into seating areas, which you often see in towns and cities. Um, this is not really related, but kind of made me think of it when we're talking about the Bobcat and outdoor dining, because I had pitched this idea a couple months ago, or maybe last year to Valerie. And I think Ian, you might've heard me talk about this as having like a a pop-up park right there between the jewelry store and, uh, the Bobcat. Um, and somebody pointed out to me that there used, used to be able to park behind the, um, you know, behind sort of like behind the funeral home or back there and then walk up to Main Street through there. But then some landowner put a fence. Does anybody know who put the fence there? And do they not want people walking through there? And who owns that parcel? And could it be a park? And maybe there could be outdoor dining there or one of the picnic tables. So three things. Uh, Piper or Piper Westbrook owns the parcel, most of it. Uh, the Bobcat owns a small slab of it, but they put their ramp on most of it. The fence was put up by the funeral home um to mitigate traffic through there um because they really that's not a public parking space that is there really only parking for their funerals and it was becoming an issue with not being able to have adequate parking for their business do you think that there might be uh openness to a conversation if it was a you know like you see sometimes in cities like parking no parking between certain hours i mean they don't have funerals you know all the time or at night um or yeah, even if we left, what's that they, they do hours. calling hours usually in the evenings yeah. it's a tough one their business is so sporadic it's not like they know that it's like oh monday through thursdays we're busy it's look we had a bunch of people die this week so. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's I, know, I, mean that, but I work for him. That's how it would be. It would be like, yeah, I mean, you're right. I, I wonder though, like, you know how the church does is that um, they just put cones up on the day of, um, you know, if, if I just, it seems like it's, it's really quality real estate. And even if, you know, a hundred days a year, it was blocked off, you know, or, or, you know, permit only. Um, but be that as it may, even with the fence there, it could still be a pop-up park if Piper and the Bobcat were interested. And um, I know that there's money like the the Better Places grants uh, to do pop-up parks um, to increase, you know, availability of spaces and make them beautiful. So the, the only blowback I got on when there was discussion on trying to do the pop-up park between the bank in uh, the Rockwood block was, we have one of the most beautiful parks within eyesight of that. Why would we do a park uh, just across the road from one of the most beautiful parks there are? So that's just some of the blowback I've gotten and people aren't sure why you would do it. So. More space, quiet space, different space, outdoor seating for dining. I, I think there's lots of good reasons. I mean, and I guess the question would be, you know, when you're looking at the space between the Bobcat and the jewelry store, not much happens there, you know, between the bank and, um, you know, snaps, people do like to drive through there. So some people would be missing that. But the other one, I don't really know who would be sad, but I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe there's somebody and get, you know, who has really investment in that space, not being public. I don't know. Just thought. I think it's something in that particular area because of how narrow it is and your, your limitations. I think it would, if if it was outside dining, I think it would have to be specific to the Bobcat. If they wanted to explore that and have more dining out there than what they could accommodate in the front, they would maybe work with the landowner to try to accommodate that and, and design and build something there. I don't really see it as a public park 
A, because of what Chris said, we have a park across the street. And he's right, you know, we core explored that closing that road between the bank. Um, but it was just, it was the location and the idea of how many people would use it as much as I want to close that down, because I think it's a terrible place to have a road, putting a park there just didn't seem to be the way to do that. Because I think it would just, I just don't think it would be used. Uh, and I think this one, you know, would you get a sandwich at mini factory or something and then walk over and sit there? Like probably not, you'd probably go to our large park. So I think it would have to be something that if they wanted to, the Bobcat would explore to have more dining for themselves. Diane? I'm a little confused. Are you talking about the alley that goes down to the funeral home? Or are you talking about the one-way street by the bank? We, we're what? talking about the alleyway, but we've mentioned the bank because there was a concept from Bristol Core to have a pop-up park uh, well, at the bank location. But that was, remember, that was an Snaps older one. had outdoor dining. Snaps Correct. had outdoor dining more. Yeah, that was that was part of that. We we proposed that, and then mm -hmm. Snaps asked if they could have dining there uh, throughout the pandemic when it was very difficult to have seating inside. And they did that for I think a couple of seasons, and then they, when everything opened up, they no longer did that. I think mainly again because Snaps is a is a whole nother um, business away. People didn't know to go sit there and get wait, waiter or waitress service. It was just an awkward place because it's down the street a little bit. So yeah, it was said, difficult for the waitresses. That's yeah. That's that's shit. Who owns she, that? Who owns that little little street? that space? It's mainly yeah. Parmalo. They own the bank land, and so I think pretty much all of that, including the road. I think Sherry, the Rockward block, has the sidewalk, but the rest is owned by Parmalo, who own the, that yeah. whole Prince Lane area. Correct. Yeah. And Sherry told me recently that um, it was just, it's with staffing, um, it's just that much farther. So it's, yeah. it adds more um, more tables and they have to walk a long way and it just makes it hard for them. So she wasn't like super eager to reopen that. Um, okay, uh, so we'll just leave that there. Yard waste, town compost. Um, does anybody feel like that's something that we should try to move forward and have a conversation with and, and where do we go with it? No. I well, I think, don't RNL do some of that uh, during certain times of the year anyway, in terms of yard waste? I think I they think, do a little bit at the town dump. Yeah, Diana's And, and I know that, I, that they've had issues with it, of people yeah. leaving other things there. Well, but. I've had an ongoing discussions with RNL and they're always very nice about it, but they do not want to do that. Uh, I, okay. My question to you, Ian, is, is that not part of their contract that they pick, that they take yard waste? I do not have the answer to that immediately. I don't, I don't know either. They okay. have ridiculous excuses and, and they're always nice, but, you know, they need the, they need the, uh, the dumpster somewhere else or people are putting trash <laughs> in the dumpster. I said, well, you can lock it. You don't have to leave it unlocked. Um, uh, that, they uh, don't, I, I, do yeah. Go ahead. I'm, I'm okay. Um, I have seen um, the situation when people put, when you say lock the dump dumpster, it's not open at the end. It's it's got these high walls, and people come and just heave big black plastic bags of of uh, of garbage in there. And uh, and it gets, um, you know, it's a it's a big hassle to them. The bags break open, and you've got garbage strewn all over wherever there were already branches and stuff. Um, well, I haven't studied their dumpster, but most dumpsters have lids. That you well, this what, there's doesn't. It's a roll off container, not a dumpster. So it is okay. an open top box. Okay, well, I'll take that up with them because, you know. Most people who have dumpsters or, you know, towns or places like that, they use chains and they lock their dumpsters so people don't put trash in them. Well, because I think I personally don't want to drive to Middlebury with my yard waste anymore. I'm tired of it. I think they should take it. <clears throat> so that's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear you. I I don't feel strongly about it. Um, but 
I mean, I, I think I, it's worth asking them. I, I mean, I think that the, you know, I think any unattended um, thing left there is going to have problems. And uh, if the dumpster's locked and people are leaving trash, they'll just leave the trash outside the dumpster. I think the question is, you know, can we have them collect it on Saturdays? Um, and that's worth a conversation with them. Um, but I, it's not, yard waste is, I don't think, um, required in the state law um, for haulers. Like the law says that they, if they offer trash, they have to take recycling and compost, but I don't think it says yard waste. That's considered a se separate waste stream. So. Yeah, and, and the hard part with yard waste for them is leaves and branches are two different piles when they go to the, when they have to go to the transfer station. So it's, it, it it's not, I just know the logistics. And the reason why I said no is just having dealt with the landfill here in town for many years. The, the yard waste is a huge, huge logistic nightmare. I wonder if we could do this. Um, Valerie, if it's not too much to ask, could we invite you to, um, at your convenience in the coming weeks, have a conversation with r &L, um, and invite them to, um, you know, be more, more open to yard waste. So I don't want to put it on a committee member, especially if, you know, Diane has in the past gotten uh, very polite, uh, but not very uh, satisfactory answers. Um, and I wonder if just coming from the town and saying, you know, this was something that uh, community members uh, brought forward when we were talking about ARPA, we'd really love to see um, and support you having this be more available to us, you know, at least three seasons a year, what can you do for us? And just let, just let that be there and see what they'll say. I'll need a reminder. <laughs> I need a, a visual tickler to do that. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm not, I don't have a notepad with me right now, so I'm not. Got it. Notes. Send email to Val, um, sweet talk, <laughs> R and L. Okay. It won't be super high on my list right now. That's fine. We don't have yard waste yet. Right. In the next month would be super. <laughs> Diane? Is your yeah. hand up again or still? No, I thought I put it down. I didn't. Okay. That's fine. Uh, so farmer's market, local ag support, community garden. Um, sounds like that's moving ahead. Yeah. Great. So they know that if they need something, they should, um, you know, check with the the town. I mean, what? Yeah. Bristol Core is is handling the logistics of that. Of the of the farmers market. Correct. And that's fine. I do. We want to go further with the local ag support. I mean, the community garden is happening. The farmers market's happening. That's a great start. Yeah. Agreed. More pickleball courts. Oi. <laughs> Rec Club already has two that use the tennis courts. Mm -hmm. I don't know where there'd be more room for more. That's exactly what the Rec Club thought. Yeah. I I mean, it's a great theory and I, I think it's growing, but it, it, whether in the future the rec club is able to figure something out, I mean, that is the logical place for it. And that would be in their valley, Rick. I don't, and if they felt that they needed additional funding, they would know to uh, come to the town or ask for a larger uh, appropriation during a, a town meeting. So I think we can move on from that one. Okay. Bike fleet. That screams Meredith. I know yeah. that she has she has that already in terms of the programming that the rec department does. I don't know how broad that is in terms of uh, the public using it. All right, but it would be a, so, it would be a good question for her. So we'll just email that to her and say, you know, Bike Fleet was on the tier two ARPA list. If you have ideas, uh, put together a proposal. <laughs> yep. Um, and again, you know. These would all be things that we would want the select board to consider after all the other ones. 
Um, but if a grant writer comes in, then they may be able to say like, oh, there's money for this in this other pot somewhere. So Exactly. Okay. Water fountain at the town green. Uh, you know, Meredith got one put in for us, uh, um, you know, a water filling, water bottle filling station. So this and, is a uh, drinking water fountain. <laughs> yeah, right? but, but um, the water bottle filling station um, at the rec club um, got huge amount of use in the summertime. It was a sure. huge hit. Um, and I think that'd be a great idea to have on the town green. And Meredith made that happen at the rec club. So I don't know. What do you guys think? I'd have, if she's done it before, she ought to, it would be great if she could at least start the process of chasing that down. And, we, and there's already water on the green. It's it's piped into a certain area, so you could put it near there. But it's a nice thing to have. Okay. And it's it's not too obtrusive. It needs to be sort of covered over and uh, shut yes. shut off for the winter time. And exactly. I think our water uh, department folks do that each year. Yeah. Diane, is your hand up? You could probably put her hand up. Um, well, I'm sorry, this is out of order. Did we talk about comp town compost? Because that's no, I thought that the yard was, Yeah, no, i sorry. I thought that was all the same thing. Is there something else you wanted to add on the compost? Well, I've had people say to me, why don't we have a town compost? But I said, I said, well, you know, the, the trash, the garbage collectors, I'll take compost in the green pails. That was my response to them. Right. So I don't know. I guess I, I don't know. Logistically, okay. again, I don't know where we would be able to do it. And secondly, uh, composting facilities are state licensed. Um, right. It, it, yeah, and it, it, that would be a huge expense. Um, so I think your answer was a good one that like all of the haulers, who, if they pick up trash, they're required to also offer service for compost and recycling. Um, mm -hmm. But for the town to have its own facility, that's it's a whole business. Um, mm -hmm. And that that's way out of our league. What's what's down in the old gravel pit? Have they filled it in? The old, which, which, what are you talking when, about? When you go from the transfer station, there's a large driveway. It used to go down to an old gravel pit, and that was utilized for, I don't know, various things over the years. And I just wondered if it's all filled in now. It's not used. Now it's the solar field. Well, I think, Diane, so solar, down, down below the solar field, um, the town um, road crew has stuff. So they have okay. some yep. like gravelly things and concrete things. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. That's all I need. Yeah. Because I think we should have a mini golf course there. But anyway. <laughs> uh, okay. So I'll, I'll put the water fountain on Meredith's list for a dream box. Uh, little free library boxes. Is there, there's just the one now, right? Uh, next to the Bobcat. Are there other, oh, there's one on the town um, green. On the town green. Yeah. And then the one by the Bobcat. So my question would be, um, where do we need more? Right. And if so, I'm happy to chat with um, the library crew on our next staff meeting about this interest. I'd say, let's start with them. Why don't you start with the library and say, hey, this came up in the ARPA discussions. Um, <laughs> And um, and ask the library if they feel like more are needed, and if so, how many and where. Okay. Um, and I'm pretty confident we could find uh, community members. I have several trail network people who are super handy carpenter types, okay. um, and um, I'll bet we could make that happen for next to nothing. Um, my question for the library would be: um, I often take books to put into the little free library. Um, and it feels like it's often sort of crammed full and the, um, the caliber of literature is very low. And um, I'm curious if anybody ever um, sort of cleans that out because I feel like um, maybe it turns into a little bit of a dumping station. Like who's in charge of those? Is anybody in charge of them? And I hope that the one at the playground um, is a little bit better managed than the one by the Bobcat. 
So those are great questions. So once, twice a week, I will attend, to, I'll tend to the one on the green um, for the playground. Um, I have not done the Bobcat one, so I will bring that up to um, the staff. What happens is that's the case is people take books and sometimes they just like, I, <clears throat> pardon me, I just cleared out a bunch of stuff. It looked like from somebody's old binder from like 1970s, like shoved in there. So I think that becomes an issue as well. Um, we and have like twice I've, gone, well, twice I've gone and it's had a lot of religious material. Interesting. So I think people just sort of, my guess, what I have experienced with the one under the play structure is that I think people take the books. I think people are really appreciative of that, but I also think people clean out things and they're like, Oh, I'm just going to put it in the free library. Somebody will read it. Like that whole idea of, you know, reduce, reuse, recycle. Um, and we have at the library donation protocols. Like we really don't want books that are, you know, older than like a year or so. Um, you know, they have to be in good condition. And I think sometimes it does become, I hate to say this word, but a dumping ground. Right. Um, so my other thing would be if we added more boxes, that adds more, you know, we'd have to find volunteers to do that. And and I go through, um, we have a, you know, we, we discard books, um, go through those. And, but again, I'm talking just about the one under the kid's structure. So that is, you know, birth, you know, to teen. Um, so let me bring that on Thursday to our staff meeting and we'll go from there and then I can send out an email to the group. And, um, another thing that you might share is one of the things that came up, you know, in our ARPA conversations about our suggestions was that, um, you know, oftentimes we find that people were making suggestions and they didn't know it already existed. So it might've been that whoever made these suggestions didn't even know we had them. Um, Good point. And while we're at it, um, so, you know, the library, maybe we have more or maybe we stick with the two there are, mm -hmm. um, but that uh, the library, um, you know, does a little bit more communication to the community about what they are and what the protocols are. So encouraging people to, um, you know, to only put things in those boxes that are things that the library would otherwise accept so that we could perhaps discourage some mm -hmm. of the more um deeply religious tracts and some of the, you know, out of date materials. Exactly. Like for me, I mean, I'm just speaking for myself. I would much rather have somebody reach out to the library and say, I have these donations. Would you like them? And whether or not we use them or not, that's up to us, but that they don't end up in the little free libraries without being first looked at does that make sense well like, isn't the isn't the idea of the library, yes. the library like take one leave one take one leave one yeah but then yeah i'm not sure i mean yeah i mean i think we'll it's just have to like saying, yeah communication like for, right helen mm -hmm. um aren't books recyclable in the recycling not sort of. not with their covers yeah, generally not. A hardback is not. A paperback might or might not be. Depends okay. on the binding. Because I was going to suggest that anytime we stop by, if it's full of old stuff or stuff that we don't think anyone will want, just take it home and put it in your recycling. But if it's not that easy, then... No, but I mean, there is a book recycling at the Solid Waste District, yeah. um, and they um, have the bindings cut and then the paper is recycled. Yeah, if so you have a utility blade, you could cut the covers and the spine off, and then yeah. Yeah. you can. But now it's a bit of a project. But right. Good question. Um, so the last time I spoke with Coco regarding the free library boxes, she asked uh, who made the one by the Bobcat, and I said that my father did when he worked at Stark Mountain Woodworking. So he's done some repair on that. And huh. then he and I were going to take on building another one. And this was going to be situated outside of the library. It would be on the near the front steps on the grass right there. It was going to be put onto a post and sort of resemble the library in a certain way. Uh, and then I decided that I was doing way too many things and couldn't do that. Um, but I did have designs for that. And so if Porter, if you know folks who might want to take that project on, I'd be happy to pass on 
the information I collected so that could happen. Great. And then uh, I'll wait for you, Ali, to tell me um, what you guys decide at the library. Um, the first person I'd approach is uh, Richard Butts, just so you guys know. Um, but there, I have like four guys on the list um, okay. that help out. Thank so, you. Uh, okay, great. Ali, thank you. That's no, you're welcome. All right. Infrastructure, upgrade financial systems and IT systems for town. Valerie, Ian, um, has the town made any progress on that? Uh, in some ways. So I asked to have an additional 10,000 added to the technology fund this year. This was from unassigned funds from 2021. It was quite a lengthy discussion at town meeting regarding that, but it did pass. So in July, we'll have, uh, I think it's 17,000 in that account. And so generally that's used for larger technology purchases like laptops, things of that nature. But I wanted to add a little bit more to that to try to start this process. Um, part of it is the I, on the IT side, it's just getting a little bit better technology uh, in the town offices to and, and to sort of make it easier for folks to use it and understand it and make sure that we're not paying for services that we're not using. Um, I wanted to get a little bit more secure in terms of emails and having proper emails for different departments instead of a mishmash of what the town has at the moment and also get email accounts for select board members and potentially um, uh, committee members because that could be, it, should, it shouldn't be on people's personal email because if there's any legal action, it needs to all be uh, given out potentially. So I'm trying to work on that. Um, the financial side, Anthony, the treasurer and I had worked on uh, for a couple months, the idea of using new financial software, but it comes with a hefty price. It's one of the reasons I think why it wasn't picked in that in the top 20 is that it was an ongoing cost each year. And we're still looking at that. Um, it's a great system. I think both of us agreed that it could really benefit the town, but it, it does come with a very hefty price tag. And whether that price tag actually benefits us in the long run in terms of what it can do, uh, we don't know yet. So I, I guess the the answer is I'm I'm slowly chipping away at that. But any money that could come and support that would be uh, really appreciated. One of the main things I'm working on is trying to improve the town website. There are a number of things wrong with it, one of them being its age uh, and just its backbone. I'd really like to get that sorted out. Uh, and the town has been lucky because it's paid very little for its website over the years. Um, and now I think it needs to sort of come into the into the now and the future and actually pay a little bit more for a substantial upgrade uh, and improvements and and things that would would help the town do what it needs to do. So I'm working on that. So I would say again, hopefully there'll be um, somebody doing some grant writing support um, and you know that might help move that forward as well. And you know I might just jump in here too, just in general. Like, obviously, we have a, a tier one list and you and Lush Select Board are going to be working to try to finance those projects. But there's also obviously a clear time frame on when ARPA money has to be spent. Yeah. Um, and I wonder if it might be beneficial to have a couple of basically ready to go backup projects mm -hmm. that you know what they cost, how it gets done, what the time frame of those projects would be. So that if we get closer towards sort of the deadline of expend expending the money, and there's still remaining funds that we had hoped had gone one way, but doesn't look like it's going to come out, that you'd have kind of a list of here's how we finance those projects that we know we can do, even yeah. if they weren't our top picks. And again, not that you would intentionally do this, but, but that might right. be a way where there could be money for something like this if it fell through elsewhere. Right. Yeah, that's a great suggestion, Mike. Thank you. Yeah. Um, do we need community-wide internet Wi-Fi? Tell me more about that. We already have it. Crystal Core right. put it in many years ago. We get it uh, supported by Waitsfield Champlain Telecom. They generously donate that connection. Um, we have it all over town. It's designed to be on the outside, not really for inside businesses. Uh, often businesses, especially if you're spending time inside, have their own system. But we have a system that runs from outside from South Mountain Tavern all the way up through past 
a little past Howden Hall. Um, and as far as I know, it works great. I use it when I'm out and about, and uh, we've it's been running for many, many years. I, I think the issue that people had in terms of wanting to grow at least the Wi-Fi part was that you go into a business and suddenly it doesn't work or a business expects it to be working for them, but it was never designed that way. It was only for, for, for usually for tourism and people on the outside using uh, and wanting to get information. Two Betsy? questions. Uh, does it work at the park? It does. It's all, it's all in the park and it goes, and we've, it, the last one that we installed, which core paid for the hardware was improving the connection at Howden Hall. So it actually, they're all connected. Uh, it's a mesh system. So if you're in the park and you cross uh, across the crosswalk and you're standing outside of Howden Hall, it'll work there too. It's the same system. And it's Bristol public Wi-Fi, and you just have to put in your email or something. Correct. And what happens to that email? It goes to a list on um, uh, Mailchimp for Bristol Core, but we actually it's used so much that it's we don't really do anything with it. Um, just because there's there's so many emails that come in and so many people use their a fake email. One suggested that I might just take that off because we're not really using it because it's it's just too much. It's overwhelming how much it's used and how many. So I might just That'd take that off of there and then it would just yeah. be open. So I wonder, this is making me think because we've talked a couple of times about the things that maybe people aren't as aware of. Um, I wonder if we could have a little monthly column of did you know? You know, did you know that there is free Wi-Fi outside from South Mountain Tavern all the way up to Howden Hall? And it's designed to, for outside use for members of the public and for visitors. And here's how you get in and it's free. You're welcome. Um, did you know that um, there are little free library boxes here? Um, help yourself. Did you know that, you know, there is an outdoor pool um, that's available to Bristol people for a very small fee, but it's a private company. Like, I don't know, what do you guys think of that? Good idea. So, uh, so Ian, you can write the first one. Thank you. I I have another question about the Wi-Fi. Sure, Betsy. Yeah. <clears throat> the fact that it turned up on our lists, I'm wondering whether that was people wanting Wi-Fi in the business section for out of towners or whether that was people maybe up where there's more trailers who um, end up having to sit outside of the library in the winter time to do their homework. Um, it could be a combination. I definitely know people use the library one when, when it's warm enough to sit out on the bench, people often use, use that. Um, I don't know if it's also a combination of people wanting better uh, cell service, and it's still fairly poor. Uh, Verizon is fairly decent here. Uh, AT&T is not very good. And I know that the complaints I've heard before was, can we get, can we improve AT&T? And I attempted to do that through Bristol Core. It's very difficult to find the person that you need to talk to about getting that kind of hardware. I know that other towns have received boosters. I know that Lincoln has, I think, a, an AT&T repeater of some sorts in their town, because if you drive through, it suddenly jumps and you've got the, the greatest service ever for a small portion of the town. Um, but I've never been able to find someone and get a good answer about how to, we could implement that. Well, that's actually the very next item on our bullet point here is updated cell service and oh, broadband. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, I keep seeing things in the news about, you know, Maple broadband or whatever, like, is this affecting Bristol? Is Bristol benefiting from whatever's going on there? Uh, a little bit. Maple Broadband is the um, CUD, the Communications Union District. And so Addison County, uh, Maple Broadband services all of Addison County. It's using a number of different funding mechanisms to put in uh, fiber to sort of the last mile of people who don't have that. Uh, Bristol is actually very well covered by Waitsfield Telecom. Um, especially in the former village area, it's very dense and they did a whole upgrade a couple of years ago. And so you can run fiber directly to your house. If you've seen the big spools of wire sitting on uh, telephone poles around the town, that's what that is. It's fiber optic cable. And I don't know why some of them aren't connected yet. Um, so it's, they're very good in, in town. Supposedly our coverage 
even for the rest of the town is good. Um, but I know a number of people who live outside of the former village who aren't able to get it. And, I, and I'm not sure why that is if they do indeed have coverage. So Maple Broadband generally won't help Bristol a great deal. They're much more focused on towns that have a very small percentage of coverage for broadband access. Um, but uh, we will, if there's enough in, information uh, presented, I can, I'll, we'll find out about that. And we have a couple representatives, uh, town residents who are on the board um, of Maple Broadband and have been for many, many years. But they're, but they're really working well. They've gotten a number of grants. They're actually, they have begun running fiber from poles and they're working with partners like Waitsfield Telecom to get fiber to as many people. Essentially, they want to get fiber to every, every household uh, in Addison County. That's their goal, um, which, is, which is fantastic. So how do we find out or identify who among our Bristol neighbors, either in the village or in the broader town, need this help? Maybe we should have the, um, the high school kids tell us. They, <laughs> they might very well yeah. know, and they would probably cover the whole area. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we can definitely find out from Waitsfield Telecom. Uh, I don't know the exact person to reach. I have some contacts there, but they're mainly on sort of the sales side and not more of the not the more technical side. Uh, Mike, for example, lives on Lower Notch, and we've spoken at, at length about fiber. And for some reason, even though supposedly it's in the town, Mike isn't able to get fiber connection. He can only get a telephone, a copper line connection. But I know that it's run all over town, so I don't know if it's just the expense of connecting into that and again doing that last mile to serve uh various houses and Waitsfield Telecom isn't willing to do that and perhaps with Maple Broadband they could do that or if it's something else and really there isn't fiber along every road um so I'm not sure but I I I guess I could my first thing would be talking to Dan uh, Sonneborn who's on the Maple Broadband committee uh, and then perhaps they have contacts for Waitsfield Telecom to sort of find out. But in my initial findings, it said that access was very good in Bristol. Uh, we, it was like, I don't know, 90% or 80, 88% served. Um, and so they were focusing on other towns. So I don't mean to dump more on you, but um, because I don't think this was an isolated incident, I recall there being, you know, at least a handful or more of these cell service broadband concerns. So if we could, you know, let Don, Dan know that um, there are some concerns in town and ask if they have a way of quantifying, you know, or showing us um, or showing the town, you know, where where is the shortfall and how do we help? Okay, I can do that. Great. And then again, with the cell service, if there's anything you can do, um, that'd be great, but. Yeah, don't, don't hold out hope on that, I'll tell you that. So Valerie, was the fire department, did they, were they gonna do something to improve their um, emergency service, some kind of tower? Chris well, can tell you. Chris can tell you about speak that. more to the <laughs> yeah, uh, what? a lot more information. Did yeah, I imagine so that, or is that actually a thing? It's a thing. <laughs> so they're they're currently working to try to place a communications tower at the fire station. Um, there's a few me me uh, mechanisms that they need to um, go through to make that happen. Um, so it, it, some new light was shed on it on Friday. They've just started moving forward on it again. We thought it was dead in the water, but we think we found um, a, a possible path to make that a, a possibility. But that I will that. But that's specific to telecommunications for emergency use only. It wouldn't be for internet or 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 uh, cell service, correct? No, that is that is incorrect. Hmm. The the tower itself would be. In the private, well, I mean, it really comes down to what the Public Utility Commission finalizes and says. But the if you read through Act Two Forty Eight A, it's all the above. So it, it potentially could um, be an opportunity, but that's a long ways off. Okay. Great. 
Thank you, Chris. Yep. Uh, okay, pressure regulator. Oh, here's a typo. Pressure regulators in homes offer low flow faucets, and then the prayer rock safety should be another bullet point. I don't um, figured as much because I didn't think that rock needed low flow faucets, but I could, I was like, maybe. <laughs> Just turn on that rock. Um, so I think this came from some people on the energy committee. I'm not sure. Yes. Um, and it's a great idea. I think we should just bump it back to them. Um, I think it's the one where if they um, if they have a fully like a proposal, um, then you know they should bring that to our grant writer, and that could be something. I mean, I think there's probably other money for that. It doesn't have to be ARPA money. That's my thought. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. You can already get through Efficiency Vermont energy saving kits. Right. Um, and I've Did gotten you know? them before. And so it says for a limited time, Vermont is going to free kit of products like LEDs and water saving devices and start saving bills. So I think I think it's still on. Yeah, it's you can still get it through yeah. Efficiency Vermont and it comes with everything. So I think that's that's one that's already there that people can sign up for if they wanted to. That's another did you know post. For the for the energy committee, yes. <laughs> is that uh, just for the low flow faucets, or the it wouldn't be the pressure regulators, right? Right, those two are they're two different things. I think for these are just low flow aerators and 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 faucets. It wouldn't be for something. the The pressure regulator would have to be installed by uh, a plumber, probably, or the town, the VTUMS, who handles our water, depending on where it was installed. Right. And they're pretty pricey. Yeah. And um, I've already had one installed and it's already been blasted through so that I have uh, drips in uh, plumbing fixtures that have been in three different places that have been installed in the past year. Wow. Oh, frustrating. Yeah. Well, so again, if the energy committee can, you know, uh, come up with a little plan or a program, um, maybe they can find some additional grant money for that and offer that to residents. Yeah. Prayer Rock Safety. What did we, they talk pilot side or pedestrian side? What's that? Was that pedestrian or, or automobile safety? I think it's just safety with a period at the end of it, all of the above. Okay. Nobody wants to touch that one. We got nothing. Well, the only thing you could do would be moving it. <laughs> and, and, and I believe V Trans has looked into options on that rock for 40 plus years. Yes. And the solution yep. is paint the end of the rock white and slow down. That's that's definitely the cheapest option. Yeah. Okay, that's been studied. Uh, park and ride at Mount A with solar panels. Wait, you missed one. Oh, energy audits improvements to town buildings, including the library. In progress. Now you Great. can go to the park and ride. <laughs> park and ride at Mount A. So it's definitely not going to be a park and ride. They they you go over there most days. All three parking lots are full, pretty darn full. So I like the idea of doing solar panels, like a solar canopy. But again, that's way beyond my scope and scale. Yeah, that would have to be school MAUSD driven. It's definitely a yeah. perfect, Let's perfect just... place to do that, but it's very expensive to put that kind of infrastructure in. Yeah, I'm just going to bounce. Most yeah, I'll just bounce it straight to them. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I hear you, Chris. I mean, I think, you know, a park and ride wouldn't be so giant that um, they probably couldn't accommodate it. Kids spread out, but uh, it's out of our, I think we'll just bounce that. That's great. There are grants available, 50% grants available on publicly owned land hmm. to create new, to create new uh, park and ride lots. Even at fifty percent, I'm going to guess there's uh, higher priorities for that district to spend on. 
it's, it's, a, it's a specific grant program. Uh, I don't, I haven't paid attention to the cycle lately because they're, I'm not, I have not been aware of any practical options for it. So, but yeah. the, the programs did exist at least in the recent past. Uh, it'd be nice if I could include a link to that when I bounce this to the district. Do you know where I could find that link? That offhand. Okay. I'll just allude to it then. Yeah. Uh, second in and out road amount, Abe, should I just tell them that that came up too? Yeah. Okay. A uh, little free pantry. Should we mention that to the food shelf? Yeah. That's usually who maintains those throughout communities. Okay. Um, housing. Let's buy and build mid-ranger starter homes and then sell and use the money for more. That was my idea. I love it. It's a great idea. I wish I had millions of dollars. Totally do that. Meanwhile. Yeah. Okay, well, I Valerie, if anybody walks into the town office and they're like, hey, I've got millions of dollars and I'm interested in housing, just be sure to mention this idea. So I, I spin this up all the time to any developer that comes in that this is what they need to build and it hasn't happened yet. So, I mean, I sell it hard. Well, this is what Kevin Harper trying to do off of Firehouse Drive, but the, it, the market shifted, COVID happened and so many other things happened and they couldn't make it financially feasible. So that's how it ended up with the partnership that's there now. Right. Well, because it wasn't mid mid range, it ended up being super high range. Um, well, they were well, still they were still mid. They were going to be like two now, feet yeah. Feet but feet. before, when when it was private sector only, they couldn't make it work. Yeah. Anyway, well, that's why it's on this list because <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, all right. Renovate, invest to help seniors age in place and turn part of home to rental income or condo. Also, my idea. So yeah. I just guess I'll buy a lottery ticket. Um, anybody have any other ideas on those? Didn't, I mean, doesn't, both doesn't those, Lincoln, sorry, Chris, go ahead. I would say both those ideas are things that I feel that should go to the planning commission and that should be part of their town plan, town vision that they work through. And just, I, I believe that that's where these type of projects need to start and grow roots. To amplify that, oh, sorry to interrupt, but to amplify that, the more of these kinds of things that we can ultimately get incorporated into the municipal town plan in some form will help uh, strengthen the competitive capacity to secure grant funding for them. Correct. That was nicely said. Um, so Rob, can you carry these two bullet points to the planning commission and just let them know there's ARPA enthusiasm behind it? Sure. Thanks. All right, uh, where do things stand with the mental health social worker for the uh, police department? Um, no further exploration at the moment. I think we were waiting to see what the results were from the ARPA committee and what the town thought. I think it was again, another one that was lower on the list because it was uh, going to be a position that was paid each year potentially. And so that would be an ongoing cost. Um, I still think it's very much needed. I think our chief would say the same thing. Um, I know that it was mentioned at psych board meetings that instead of it being a, a police department position, it would be a town position uh, managed by the police department. I, and I think that's a good idea, but we have not progress any further on that position only because the the money isn't available yeah and and i'll say you know we did call it out in our report that um we all felt this was really important but we just didn't think it was a good use of arpa funds um so we hope it works out all right and i'll put the electric school buses on the district's um email just so they yeah. have it. Great. Okay. Super. Um, so not feeling any urgency here since I'm leaving town first thing tomorrow morning, but I will do this in May. Oh, wait, wait, before you get off of the school buses. Yeah. 
Um, I'd like you to correct the spelling on that. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, because I'm not going to change the... kisses. You know that that spelling. What's that? That is that's the that means a kiss, not a vehicle. A buses with two s's. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to kiss the bus okay. or the school. Um, but an electric kiss. Okay, we digress. Uh, I'm not going to change the report because that's been submitted, but I'll try to spell okay. it right when I write to the town. Okay. Thanks, Betsy. Uh, okay, so that's it for our tier two. Um, I will, um, you know, send the reminders and the notices to whoever I said I would send the reminders and the notices to when I get back in May, um, but it won't happen until then. Sounds fair. Anything else on our agenda? Let me stop my share. I was going to say, I, I think the next one is, uh, um, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Any, everybody all good? Actually, I'd like to on. just express my uh, gratitude for all of your time and efforts. You're, 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 you're coming together and, and, and bringing such great product to the select board. I truly appreciate it. And all of your time and energy and thoughtfulness and just everything. I really appreciate it. I, I second that. That's what I was going to say. I wanted to thank everyone. I, I was the one who proposed the idea of a committee because I saw that Starksboro was doing it. So I thought, well, I'll steal that and propose that and propose that to Bristol. And then, and then, as we as you progress as a committee over the last year, I think a number of towns in the surrounding area and in Addison County were all looking to Bristol to see what they were doing. You raised the, the bar because the committee was so great at what right. they were doing and accomplishing. Right. So right. I think that's uh, something to be very proud of. Um, but yeah, I wanted to thank all of you for taking the time over the last year and doing this. It's been a terrific experience. Bristol, Vermont, best period town period ever period. <laughs> All right, I was recording, recording stopped. Um, okay, so I'll be back at the very end of April. If people want to have a potluck party at my house, hopefully it'll be spring. And I have a little backyard here in the village and I'd be happy to host everybody here for a little cookout. Um, and, uh, and if it's bad weather, we could come inside. But do you guys want to do that? I don't want to force you into another meeting, but if people feel like doing that on that first Monday of May. This is Yay. Diane. I would like to do that. I'll do it. Okay. Come in. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Chris, were Wait. you going to say something, Chris? No. I was, we did, we're going to try to do it Monday night. Yeah, just that first Monday. What's the date? Is it the first? Yeah, May Day. Is there any on-street parking? Yes, in May, you can park right on the street here in Bristol. Okie dokie. <laughs> um, all right, cool. Um, so should we uh, just do random potluck and um, no assignments and just see what we get? Or Okay. I like to random. Start time. Uh, do we want to do a little earlier if we're doing a potluck? Sure. Tell me what six, time. Six o'clock. Six work. Five thirty. Whatever. Works perfect. All right. Six o'clock. We'll Great. see you all in May. Bye. Have a good trip, Porter. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. See you back. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Good night. Bye.